A wise person said to me recently, one person's grief is not heavier than another's. Grief is heavy to the heart of the one who carries it. Grief is your own experience. Nobody can tell you how to feel or how not to feel. There is no rule book for grief, no date line or schedule. Grief is made up of love and loss. The world tends sometimes to think that you need more than just these two things. The world offers advice and guidance and comments on your grief. In a lecture years ago, grief specialist Alan Wolfelt noted some of the things people say in difficult moments. A neighbor stands next to you and watches with you as your house burns down. Now you can rebuild and finally have the kitchen you have always wanted, they say, trying to cheer you up. This is true, but it is not helpful. Parents grieve the loss of a child to death. You can always have another child, a friend says to them. This could be true, but it is not helpful. A young person's fiance is killed in the war. You will love again, she is told. Might be true, definitely not helpful. Somewhere the lesson was taught that silences must be filled. This is neither helpful nor true. Silence is supportive, nurturing, and healing. Silence is also vulnerable, scary, and risky because you do not know what will happen when you are silent. Yet by being silent and holding space, you give someone the opportunity to share if they want to. In silence, you also allow them to be still and not share. I feel for people who are just trying to be helpful and come up with something they think is less painful than silence. I try and think of things from their point of view using myself, for instance. My mother died quite suddenly and at a young age, and I was gone from work for two weeks to begin to attend to her affairs and to be at two memorial services for her. When I returned to work after those two weeks, I was in shock and I was in deep mourning and if I had stood on my tiptoes and reached up, I would not have been able to touch rock bottom. It was into this moment that one of my sweetest and dearest friends and coworkers, a fellow who was sensitive and gentle and who loved me with his heart said, well, you're back now, right? So everything's okay. I did not even know what to say, so I nodded. The nod was a complete and utter lie. I was the opposite of okay. But even this sweet and sensitive friend could not realize that grief was just settling in for a long, long stay. I found that he was not the only one in my life who expected me to be over it. Grief from the death of a loved one is one of the hardest things to bear. It sticks to you like glue. It moves in like ants. It makes its presence known like old fish. It feels rotten. And what can we do about it? What can we do about it? Grief makes us feel like the formless void that existed right before God created the heavens and the earth. Darkness covered the face of the deep. How familiar. Formless, void, and dark. We are told that light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. 
but sometimes we just do not believe it. Those who are living in grief know what it feels like to want that light of God to shine upon us, to warm and heal us. We want that peace of God to comfort our hearts. We want the love of God to fill us and sustain us and strengthen us. And we are deep in the muck and mire of grief, and we do not have time or energy to wait or watch for God. And into these moments comes the healing breath of God. God, who only loves us more when we are grieving. The world, though, is not always as compassionate. The world is impatient with us for still being sad, still being unable to properly clean the house, still being in that place of non-being, that formless void. So the people of the world try to make it better by reassuring us that things will get better. But the world does not have any finite answers to the questions how, when, and where will it get better. The world just wants us to stop grieving and go back to normal, a word that no longer means anything to us. So we endure well-meaning advice. Get a cat. You won't be lonely anymore. Go on a trip. You've always wanted to travel. And try not to think of it, and it will go away. It often does feel as if the world just wants our grief to go away, and so do we sometimes. Grief is a reminder of loss, and it is painful. Grief points us to what there once was and now is not. In grief, we feel empty, lonely, and isolated. Yet grief is the reminder of something good, the warm hand of our husband, the musical laughter of our wife, the sweet mischief of our child. Grief is feelings, and feelings are individual. Only you know how you are feeling in any given moment. Sometimes the world wants to tell you how you should feel, but it is none of the world's business. And yet people of the world cannot help it. Like my sweet friend who just wanted me to feel better, just wanted me to be whole again, just wanted to me to be able to be his friend as I was before my mother died. He had no idea what to say or do because it is not always easy to know what to say or do. Trying to dictate or control the situation is not the helpful way to go. We do not have control over our grief, and we ride the roller coaster. We find, that we find ourselves standing in the Wegmans aisle sobbing for no grocery store related reason. We can only wear blue because that was their favorite color. We find ourselves laughing hysterically for no apparent reason. And we realize that we have been crying for an hour. We do not have control over this roller coaster. We just ride it. It is okay to not be okay. And you do not have to pretend that you are. There were a couple of things that were helpful to me in my deep grief, and one was presence. Friends who just showed up for no reason, with no advice, and no stories of their own. They were just there. Friends who asked me to tell stories about my mother, and friends and family who told me their favorite memories of her. Silent presence and listening hearts made a big difference. Grief is more about more than just missing the person who died. 
Grief is a reaction to profound loss. Part of you is gone, absent in the way you always knew it, yet still here in your heart, always in your heart, because the love you share is stronger than everything, including death. Death is something to go through and its effects linger, but death is not the last word. It is just a part of life. Love is the first word. Love is the current word. And love is the last word. Love helps you figure out how to continue on without the person you lost. Love in the form of silent presence, God's gentle breath, friends, family, and church. At times you will feel the spikes and thorns of grief, and at other times you may feel grief more like a creature with soft fur curled up to keep you company. Grief is nobody's first choice. And if you are grieving on this day, for someone who died 27 years ago, for someone who died yesterday, for a relationship that ended, for the loss of a job, in whatever way grief is sitting with you this evening, know that we are here to listen to your stories. We are here to listen to your fears. We are here to hold silent space with you. Death does not have the final say. Life is eternal. Love is immortal. Death is only a horizon. And we can see beyond a horizon. See beyond death even as you grieve. See beyond death by telling the stories of your loved one, by continuing traditions you shared, or by starting new traditions. Grief is a way to maintain our relationship with the one who died. In the pain of loss, we can find a new way to experience our loved one. We can continue to lean on them in times of need, and we can continue to share our joys with them. They are here. Talk to them. Tell them you miss them. Tell them you are angry that they died. Give them the updates of your life. They continue to be a very important part of our lives. In the mystery of death is the mystery of love and the mystery of the continuity of love and relationship. Embrace the mystery and lean into the love that will always be alive between you and your loved one. Thanks be to God. Amen.